The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by High Stick NT, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and Pride Seeds. Now, David, a great year for research on double cropping soybeans. Um, you've just pre- presented here at the at the conference. Um, tell us about, I guess, the bottom line. You mentioned that you know you really need to be into that 15 to 22 bushel harvest area to make this work. Yeah, so it's a huge area, it's a huge opportunity that we had this year. Very, very little research has been done in Ontario with double crop beans. We've got most of our research data from the U.S. But of course, things change as we move into different environments. We need to find better opportunities for reducing the risk of a failure for double crop beans because there is quite a significant risk for failure, but at the same time, there's a huge opportunity as well for um, planting, a, planting a, another soybean crop on the same land that you've harvested, another, another crop from, huge opportunities there, especially with the price of beans as high as they are between 12 and 15, and some cases you could forward contract up to $20 a bushel, you know, last, last summer around wheat harvest time. So it's huge interest in whether to make the system work or not. And the key is, there's a number of keys to making this work, but the main um, concern is, is whether the crop um, will finish, um, will have a, a harvestable yield at the end of the day. So when we're thinking about what, what kind of a yield potential the crop has, um, in most cases we're looking at between 20 and 25 bushel to the acre. Now, um, a lot of your research that you, you've looked at this year talked about establishment as being so key. What have you learned? Obviously planting uh, as early as possible is at the top of that list. Yes. Planting early as possible because after July 1st, like most wheat is harvested after July 1st, but every day of delayed planting soybeans, we're lo- losing a bushel per acre per day. So with beans at $15 a bushel, we're losing $15 per acre per day. Just tremendous losses. Even if we delay planting by five days, um, with a five day delay wheat harvest, if we're waiting for the wheat to dry down, um, before we harvest, we, we've lost $75 an acre just for that five-day delay in planting. And so we need to plant as early as possible. And another thing, we need to get those beans established as early as possible as well. Because regardless of the planting date, those beans have to start um, uh, through their life cycle. So just planting beans to get them in early is not good enough. So we want them to get started, to, to germinate and emerge and to be well on their growth um, as early as possible. So that's all part of that bushel per acre per day process. Now you, you mentioned in your presentation that you know, even you know, paying for drying, getting that weed off her early to save a few extra days. That's right, so it doesn't cost as much as you think to dry, so 100 bushel per acre wheat costs, or bushel per acre wheat yield, uh, five points of, uh, of moisture, we're looking at about $25 an acre cost. But if we can save, you know, three days of, or we can gain planting three days, that's f- $15 per bushel beans, that's $45 an acre that we gain for a $25 per acre investment in drying charges. And so this is what we have to do to make the system work, to increase their chances of return. We have to look at managing wheat as well, in addition to to the soybean crop. So establishment is the key. Yeah. Another thing you talked about was a full season variety. You need a tall variety. Yeah, that's right. So one of the one of the um, morphological differences on a late planted beans is that it fails to develop a canopy, okay, before flowering starts. And so then we get in a late planted bean, we tend to get lots of competition between vegetative growth and reproductive growth. Lots of competition because both of those phases overlap. So very much different than an early planted bean. And so we need to um, encourage a rapid canopy development in a, in a late planted situation in order for uh, that bean crop to intercept as much sunlight as possible and also to aid in harvest as well because you would result in harvest losses with a short 
relatively short bean. So full season variety as well, like it plays with that scenario as well. So full season variety, it would delay flowering a little bit later, and so it would allow that canopy to develop in absence of being in competition with the, with the flowering process. Mm -hmm. So that's why a full season variety uh, works in this situation. The photo period works in our favor, so um, the beans will approach maturity faster um, because it is so late in the year than compared to a normal, uh, normal planting situation. Those beans know that the end of the year is coming and they'll speed themselves up in order to race to the end before uh, a killing frost. And one of the final points you made was you need a little bit of flexibility at harvest. You need to be able to, you know, um, you know to switch the corn head if you need to. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, especially this year in November, it was a fairly wet November. Uh, as late October, November was fairly wet. We had lots of beans ready to, to harvest, but unfortunately those beans did not dry down very well. And so a lot of the double crop beans in Ontario actually that were harvested had to be harvested between 18 and up to 24, 25% moisture uh, just to get harped because there was just a few harvest days um, available in November. So when the conditions are right for harvest in late October, November, you have to take advantage of that. And one thing you have to do in that situation, of course, if you're harvesting corn, is to drop the corn head, convert to soybeans. And so that's an extra kind of hassle in the process of um, harvesting a double crop soybean.